Good morning students welcome to chemistry class so as you can see on the screen today we are discussing a very important chapter for uh, your JE syllabus that is unit number 7 and the name of this chapter is or this unit is redox reactions okay many questions were asked from this chapter in the uh, previous year questions previous year examinations you can uh, uh, refer those questions so we can see that if you observe those questions, redox reactions uh, is the important chapter for the numerical problems for the physical chemistry and we have to know the basic concept, basic theory as well as some uh, practical applications. Okay. Again, we will discuss the whole chapter in a summarized way, in a brief way with the help of the following uh, flowchart. I uh, will show it to you. Let me zoom out. Yeah. So as you can see here, so we have this flowchart, redox reaction flowchart in a summarized way, in a way and uh, in a very effective way. Uh, redox reaction. Redox reaction can be understand with the help of some sub, uh, subtopics. Number one, oxidation, reduction. What is oxidation? What is reduction? We will discuss uh, in this lecture. What are the types of redox reaction? We'll, we'll uh, take the application the very last of uh, uh, our lecture. Next one is redox reactions and electrode process, some properties, principles. We'll see that. Very important. What is oxidation number? How can we calculate the oxidation number? I'll uh, give one or two examples of the previous questions. And the very important part is how can we balance any redox reaction? If we know any redox reaction, then how can we balance this? Balance those reactions. Then we have two different methods, ON method and half reaction method. Okay, so let's start without wasting any time uh, uh, to know what is this chapter redox reaction and how can we understand this in a very effective way with some uh, example with some theories. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, now first of all, we are starting this uh, uh, chapter or we can say lecture with the help of a simple definition according to the physical chemistry according to the physical chemistry redox reaction is defined as any chemical reaction any chemical reaction in which in which oxidation and reduction occurs at the same time it's called redox reaction it means you have a reaction suppose you have a uh, reactant a and reactant b and you are reacting both of the reactants you are reacting both of the reactants a plus b so it will give you p product if a and b by interaction producing product and if we are observing that a is getting oxidized and B is getting reduced. So what we can say in the same reaction, in the same reaction, we can observe two different methods, two different processes, oxidation process and reduction process. So in any reaction in which we can observe oxidation process as well as reduction process, then this kind of reaction is called what redox reaction. Okay. Now second thing, this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, your definition. Now. Let me tell you the meaning. If we observe the, red, uh, the word redox, we can segregate this term into two parts. It's a very important thing. Please pay, pay attention. RED red and OX ox. Right? Red stands for no doubt reduction. And ox stands for no doubt tell me tell me oxidation so why redox is here because it is explaining the two different methods two different processes at the same time that is reduction and oxidation okay now according to the flow chart what is oxidation process addition of addition of oxidation uh, oxygen to an element or compound 
or removal of hydrogen from a substance it means we can see that with uh, with one example suppose i am reacting copper with water at very high temperature so what will uh, what what will be produced copper oxide along with hydrogen gas so you can see here previously copper is alone it does not have any oxygen molecule or oxygen atom but after the reaction with h2o or water now it is converted itself into copper oxide it means it had it, it have gained the oxygen molecule or oxygen atom so we can say that previously copper doesn't have any oxygen but after the reaction copper has one oxygen atom this is called oxidation because oxygen has been added to the to the copper okay now <coughs> sorry if you have remembering oxidation process then you can easily remember the or you can easily understand the term reduction because you have to do inverse of oxidation definition so what i am saying here the meaning of reduction is removal of oxygen previously addition of oxygen in oxidation right but in reduction removal of oxygen from a substance or compound but addition of hydrogen but in oxidation what was that removal of hydrogen so in oxidation we have to remove the hydrogen but in uh, reduction we have to add the hydrogen okay let me give you one example suppose i am reacting uh, hydrogen with ammonia sorry with nitrogen hydrogen is reacting with nitrogen so hydrogen and nitrogen will combine together and they will produce ammonia okay so this kind of reaction is called reduction process in which hydrogen has been added or oxygen is removed but reactions in which oxygen is added hydrogen is removed are called oxidation processes okay so redox reaction definition meaning and what is oxidation reduction we have discussed with some examples okay now if we are studying redox reaction then we have to learn some types redox reactions are categorized or divided into following types number 1 combination reaction decomposition reaction displacement reaction metal displacement reaction okay and fourth disproportionation reaction okay now this is a very important term we'll discuss this uh, in this lecture later now first of all what is combination reaction the name is very simple combination you are combining what what we are combining we are combining two different reactant molecules look at here a and b combining together and producing c either a and b both or both a and b must be in elemental form okay similarly decomposition reaction combination means combining decomposition means dissociation one complex molecule it disintegrating into simple molecules look at my hands this is my hand okay a closed hand so this is a compound molecule but if i dis disintegrate my uh, uh, hand or if i open my hand it will divide into five fingers okay so it's a very simple example my professor has uh, uh, had given in my college hand to fingers fingers to hand fingers to hand combination reactions but hand to fingers decomposition reactions okay now so we can uh, see the definition uh, or example led to the breakdown of a compound lead to the sorry lead to the breakdown of a compound into two or more compounds or sorry components at least one of which must be in the elemental state okay suppose we have calcium carbonate which is called a limestone you know that when we heat limestone they will produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide so one complex molecule one complex compound in the presence of heat is producing two different compounds one is cal calcium oxide and one is carbon dioxide okay this is called decomposition now third one is displacement reaction displacement we can say replacement we can say substitution 
one species replaced by another species in simple terms so an ion atom in a compound is replaced by ion or atom of another element look at this example x is reacting with yz y has been replaced with x xz plus y okay now metal displacement displacement can be categorized into uh, can be uh, classified into two parts metal displacement non metal displacement in metal displacement one metal is replaced by another metal when we react to copper sulfate with zinc zinc will replace copper and will form zinc sulfate okay and in non metal displacement includes hydrogen displacement okay hydrogen displacement now fourth part it's very important disproportionation reaction before uh, saying anything i'll uh, uh, give it one example to you suppose i i'm taking here yeah i'm taking here i2 iodine in the presence of basic medium which minus is base in the presence of basic medium iodine iodine converts in itself into i minus as well as io3 minus we have a molecule or we have a compound of iodine that is i2 in the presence of basic medium i2 gets converted into i minus as well as this is called iodide i am writing the name iodide and this is your iodate iodate and both the iodine listen carefully both the iodine has different oxidation state or we can say all the iodines has different oxidation state let me tell you how uh, just a minute yeah in this iodine we have zero oxidation state but in this iodine we can easily uh, observe that minus 1 but in this iodine plus 5 so iodine having zero oxidation number is exhibiting minus i minus 1 as well as plus 5 after the reaction with base so we what we can say iodine is zero and when it gets minus 1 this process will be is called reduction because when zero converted into minus 1 it means that molecular species is gaining the electron and gain of electron is called reduction i am writing here gain of electron reduction and donation of electron oxidation so in the very first part iodine having zero oxidation state is getting reduced but the same iodine but the same iodine also shows plus 5 oxidation state because of donation of electron or removal of electron then it should be your oxidation one species is gaining electron as well as removing electron so this kind of reaction or this kind of property this kind of process is called disproportionation reaction okay i hope it is clear to you now i am uh, explaining this with with a very simple example a very important example that is if in the in a in any chemical reaction if any species one species listen carefully if one species gains electrons as well as removes electron at the same time then this kind of process or reaction is called called disproportionation reaction okay so the definition is written here an element an element in one oxidation state is simultaneously oxidized and reduced similarly iodine is in zero oxidation state it simultaneously reducing as well as oxidizing
okay so uh, these types are very important but this proposition reaction is very important you have to practice more with the help of previous year questions okay okay now let's move on to the to the yeah competitive electron transfer reactions competitive electron transfer reactions okay so i have told you earlier if we want to understand redox reaction on the basis of electron transfer then we have to uh, understand that if any species gain electron then it, it should be called reduction process and if any reaction removes if any species remove electron then it should be called oxidation this is very important you have to keep this in mind gain of electron is reduction and removal of electron is oxidation so as you can see here we have a very simple example here Co uh, zinc is zinc metal is reacting with copper ions so whenever zinc reacts with copper ions zinc convert itself into uh, zinc ions and copper ion convert itself into copper metal why because zinc is eliminating two electrons and these two electrons are accepted by copper 2 plus ions okay so what we can say when zinc gives zn2 plus it is losing its electron two electrons but if copper is converting itself into cu uh, metal in solid so it is gaining electron two electron from whom from zinc okay so this is this is called electron transfer principle okay now in the next part we have completed completed now next part is very important that is oxidation number methodology now what is oxidation number so uh, let me uh, tell you the definition which is written uh, in the uh, flow chart oxidation state of an element in a compound ascertain according to a set of rules formulated on the basis that pair in a covalent bond belongs to electronegative element okay so i hope you are not getting this definition don't do that we don't have to remember this definition let me tell you the simplest definition what is oxidation number for example suppose suppose i am taking a compound h2so4 h2so4 right in h2so4 in h2so4 the center atom is center atom it should be sulfur now the meaning of the meaning of oxidation number is how many bonds can sulfur form how many bonds can sulfur form to stabilize itself as well as to stabilize other atoms so if i open the structure of h2so4 i can draw the structure like this now tell me how many bonds uh, ha, ha, yes how many bonds are sulfur is forming sulfur is forming how many bonds look carefully 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 look double bond 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 6 means sulfur is forming 6 bonds that's why the oxidation number of sulfur is tell me 6 okay so in the simple uh, terms we can say that what is the valency of sulfur or, or we can say what is the valency of any atom or species as well as how many bonds an atom can form in simply we can say oxidation number of that atom okay if an if i i am a atom if i am an atom 
how many bonds I can form or how many another atoms I can join with myself. This should be my oxidation number. Okay. So don't learn tough definitions. Please revise and learn or remember simple uh, definitions or keep these uh, things simple. Then you'll understand better and you can solve questions very easily in very less time. Now, what should be the rules of oxidation number? So we have some rules. We'll apply in, uh, by taking some examples. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we have some rules. Rule number one. In elements, each atom bears an oxygen number of zero. Yes, for example, suppose I'm giving you some example. Suppose we have H2, we have O2, we have N2, we have Cl2, we have F2. So these are called elemental form. If your species, or we can say, if your, if your, species or molecules are in elemental form then their oxygen number is always zero no exceptions okay number two for ions with only one atom oxygen number is equal to the charge of an ion it means suppose we have sodium ion Na plus we have Mg2 plus we have Cl minus we have H2 minus then the oxidation number of these species will be the charge of these in these species how many charge sodium has one plus one so oxygen, uh, the oxidation number should be plus one magnesium tell me plus two chlorine tell me minus one and sulfur Tell me, tell me, very good, minus 2. Okay, so what kind of charge we have uh, uh, will be the oxygen state of that species. Okay, now, number 3. Oxidation number of oxygen is most compound is minus 2. It is obvious, you have to remember that. 4. Oxidation number of hydrogen is plus 1. Except, this is exception, when it is bonded to metal in binary compound. Suppose, don't worry, I'm giving the example. Suppose I have hydrogen. So if I have hydrogen, it should be plus one, no doubt. It is plus one. But if I'm taking the example of, of LiAlH4, in this compound, hydrogen is connected with metal. And if hydrogen connects with metal, it becomes hydride instead of hydrogen. And if it becomes hydride instead of hydrogen then it also shows different oxygen state so what we can say in short in uh, how can we conclude this if hydrogen is connected with metal then hydrogen will show minus one oxidation state okay now rule number five halogens have an oxidation number of minus one all the halogens Chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Minus one. When they occur as halide ions in their compounds, but they will show minus one, minus one at that time when they are in halide forms. Fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide. Not, not uh, in the form of fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. If you are reading this, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, you don't have to take minus 1. You have allowed to take minus 1 instead of 0 or other oxygen state. If you can read the uh, halogens like this, fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide. Okay? Yeah. And the last rule, but not the least, algebraic sum of oxygen number of all the atoms in a compound must be zero so this is a very obvious thing you should remember that so we have studied the rules let me tell you two simple examples okay yeah now this topic belongs completely with the physical chemistry and it's a numerical problem it gives numer numerical problems for example in KMnO4, 
वॉट इज दिन नंबर ऑफ ओ एन दिस इज क्वेश्चन इन केमोनो फोर वॉट इज दिन नंबर ऑफ एम एन देन हाउ कैन बी कैलकुलेट दिस वेरी सिंपल कम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल पोटेशियम बिलोंग्स टू ग्रुप वन पोटेशियम बिलोंग्स टू ग्रुप वन एंड एवरी ग्रुप वन एलिमेंट ऑफ प्रियोग टेबल विल बी प्लस वन so let me change my pen to explain it to you better i'm taking green potassium is plus 1 oxidation is minus 2 we have uh, studied the rules okay now use the mathematics plus 1 and how many potassium we have only one so into 1 what is the oxygen number of mn we don't know then use x Plus oxygen minus two, but how many oxygen we have? Four is equals to. Now tell me, what is the charge present outside the KMnO four? Do we have any charge uh, in KMnO four? No, so zero. Now solve this. Find the value of x. So one plus x minus eight is equal to zero. So x should be your eight minus one is equal to seven plus seven. Answer. Right? It's a simple. It's a simple thing. Okay. Now, second example. Calculate the oxidation state of CR, one CR. Now, let me solve this. You 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 can uh, uh, pause the video as well to solve this. So I hope you have solved it. Now again, potassium plus one into two. We don't uh, we don't know the chromium, so chromium is X into two because we have two chromium, and oxygen minus two into seven. The equation should be one into two plus x into two or two x we can say uh, plus minus two into seven is equal to zero because we don't have the and we don't have any charge uh, uh, on the outside of K two S C R two O seven. So two plus two x minus fourteen is equal to zero. Two x is equal to fourteen minus two that is twelve. So x should be equal to twelve upon two is equals to plus six. Answer. Okay. So this is a way which we can use to solve or we to determine the oxy exact oxidation number of any species, any unknown species in a compound. Okay. Okay. So I hope you are uh, getting things in very easily. Now. Uh, Let me tell you another topic. Yeah, okay. That is balancing. After oxidation number, we have to uh, uh, switch us to the topic balancing. Now, you know that whenever we write the whenever write whenever we write any uh, chemical reaction, we have to observe either this reaction is balanced or not. And what is a balanced reaction? In a chemical reaction. Total number of elements, total number of atoms, total number of charge should be equal on the both the sides, reactant side as well as product side. Okay, and if reaction is not balanced, then we can balance. We have to balance with the help of two different methods called oxidation number method as well as half reaction method. Okay. I'll tell you the. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll I'll explain uh, to you both the uh, methods with the help of some examples later. But firstly, we have to know what is what are these methods. Now, first of all, oxidation number method. We can solve or we can balance any reaction. I have told you earlier right now, balanced reaction. Balanced reaction is LHS should be RHS. Number of species, number of atoms, number of charge, number of electrons should be equal on the both both sides. That is left hand side and right hand side. 
if lhs equal to rhs only that time we can say this reaction is balanced otherwise not now if reaction is unbalanced or we can say is not balanced then we can use two different methods first method is oxidation number method and in oxidation number method we have to use or we uh, we can use several methods or several steps to solve any unbalanced reaction step 1 write the correct formula of each reactant and product very important step 2 identify atoms undergoing change in oxygen state zero is converting into minus 1 plus 1 plus 5 plus 4 this is change so we have to observe that step 3 calculate increase or decrease in oxidation number per atom and for entire ion or molecule okay if unequal multiply by suitable number to make equal similarly if we have cr2 and the product side we have we have cr then multiply by 2 all the side will be balanced step 4 Add H plus or OH ion to make total ionic charge of reactant and product equal. It is obvious thing. I'll uh, give you, uh, I'll practice uh, 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 some questions with you. Don't worry about it. Step 5. Equalize H plus on two sides by adding water. Okay. Now, let me explain to you the simple uh, reaction simple uh, uh, question with you okay now suppose I'm changing my pen suppose we have MnO4 minus plus Fe2 plus it's giving you Fe plus 3 and Mn plus 2. You have to balance this reaction with the help of oxidation number method. This reaction is not balanced. You can pause the video and check it. This reaction is not balanced. Okay. Now, first of all, observe the Mn. Mn is plus 7 here. I have uh, I have teach you the method to calculate the oxidation number of any species in a compound. Okay. This is the method. This is how we can obtain the plus 7 on Mn. MnO4 minus Mn has plus 7, Fe plus 2, Fe plus 3, Mn plus 2. Now, Mn from plus 7 to plus 2, plus 7 is converting into plus 2. It means it is, it is gaining or removing, gaining 5 electrons. Gain, but in Fe from plus 2 to plus 3, it is releasing one electron. Release okay. Now, the second step we have to balance. Sorry, before balancing, these values should be multiplied oppositely. It means 5 should be multiplied with Fe and 1 should be multiplied with Mn. So MnO4 minus plus 5 Fe plus 2 gives out 5 Fe plus 3 and Mn plus 2. Okay. Now, on the left hand side we have 4 oxygen but on right hand side we don't have any oxygen. So, we have to add 4 H2O. For balancing oxygen we have to add sufficient amount of oxygen, uh, sufficient amount of water on the deficient side. Now, on right hand side we have 8 hydrogen, but on left hand side we don't have any hydrogen. So, to balance hydrogen we have to add sufficient amount of H plus on, on the left hand side. So, I am writing again. So, 8 H plus because on right hand side we have 8, uh, we have 8 hydrogen, remember that. So, 8 H plus plus MnO4 minus plus 5 Fe plus 2 gives out 5 Fe plus 3 plus Mn plus 2 plus 4 H2O. 
this is your complete balance reaction you can check by pausing the video pause the video and check every species element uh, atoms ions charge everything you want okay and this is how you can balance any unbalanced reaction with the help of oxidation number method okay okay now we have the second method this is very interesting and very easily as well second uh, method is half reaction method method also we have some steps let me discuss with you step 1 produce unbalanced equation for the reaction in ionic form okay understood step 2 separate equation into two half reactions that is oxidation half and reduction half i'll tell you don't worry step 3 individually balance atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen okay step 4 for reactions occurring in acidic medium add h2o to balance o atoms and h plus to balance h atoms okay understood balance charge by adding electrons to one side of the half reaction okay add two half reactions and cancel the electrons on each side very good verify if equation has same type and number of atoms and same charge on both side of the equation now these seven steps are very boring okay so let me tell you sorry let me use these steps in very simple way by taking same example which i have teach you earlier the example is so in this question i am using the second method that is half reaction method okay okay so yeah i am taking the example here i am explaining the example here okay uh, again the same reaction MnO4 my, let me uh, change the pen new pen new josh so uh, yeah MnO4 minus plus Fe plus 2 gives out plus 2 okay now first of all we have to segregate the reaction to two halves mn is plus 7 plus 7 is converting to plus 2 that is reduction half mno4 minus is converting into mn plus 2 and what is oxidation half Fe plus 2 is converting into Fe plus 3. Okay. Now, first of all, balance all the species. Every species is balanced. On left hand side and right hand side, both has only one Mn. So, it is okay. In oxidation half reaction, both the sides have one Fe. So, don't need to balance. Now, on reduction side, on reduction half, on the left hand side we have 4 oxygen and on right hand side we don't have any oxygen so add 4 H2O and on right hand side 8 H plus okay so I am writing here 8 H plus okay uh, okay now this reaction can be written as for uh, balancing the charge on the basis of electron transfer so mn plus 7 is converting into plus 2 it means it is gaining 5 electrons so i will write this reaction as 5 electrons plus 8h plus uh, plus mno4 minus gives out mn plus 2 plus 4h2o in the second part second part second part second part yeah fe plus 2 is converting into plus 3 it means it is releasing one electron so fe plus 2 gives out fe plus 3 one electron to balance the charge we have to multiply oppositely so
फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन प्लस एट एच प्लस प्लस एम एन ओ फोर माइनस गिवज आउट एम एन प्लस टू प्लस फोर एच टू ओके सो आई हैव मल्टीप्लाइड दिस होल इक्वेशन विथ वन बिकॉज आई हैव वन इलेक्ट्रॉन हेयर बट दिस रिएक्शन शुड बी मल्टीप्लाई विथ फाइव बिकॉज वी हैव फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन वी हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई ऑपोजिटली सो फाइव फाइव एफ ई प्लस टू गिवज आउट फाइव एफ ई प्लस थ्री प्लस फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन नाउ एड दीज बोथ रिएक्शन सो फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन विल कैंसल आउट इच अदर ओके एंड वेन दे कैंसल आउट यू कैन राइट दी होल रिएक्शन एट एच प्लस फाइव एफ ई प्लस टू प्लस एम एन ओ फोर माइनस गिवज आउट एम एन प्लस टू प्लस फाइव एफ ई प्लस थ्री प्लस फोर एच टू ओ you can check this reaction this reaction will be balanced form this will be reaction in, uh, will be in balanced form check the atoms pause the video and check the atoms species ions as well as charge okay so this is a simple method which we, uh, we can use to solve any kind of unbalanced reaction uh, with the help of two different methods oxidation number method and half reaction method which are very important as well as essential for the physical chemistry because many questions were asked in the previous year questions you can check check from yourself okay no so major major parts we have completed now we have only few things here balancing is completed now next is redox reaction and electron process we have uh, some terms here redox couple this is not uh, like an ordinary couple redox couple is two uh, let me tell you the definition having together oxidized and reduced form of a substance involved in oxidation reduction half reactions suppose a redox reaction is going on and we know that in redox reaction we will be observe oxidation process as well as reduction process so if we are observing oxidation process and reduction process we can say at the same time two different process are going on so this phenomena is called redox couple because if oxidation is happening and if redox uh, sorry if reduction is happening then we need two different electrodes because transfer of electron or exchange of electron can be done on electrodes only so in a redox setup we can see the oxidation reaction electrode as well as as well as reduction reaction electrode so a setup or a cell we can say a cell or a setup in which two different electrodes are present with different processes then this condition is called redox couple okay now second is electrode potential if we are Uh, if we are performing redox reaction with the help of two different uh, electrodes that is oxidation uh, half electrode oxidation reaction electrode and uh, reduction reaction electrode then we can see that both the electrodes are dipped in their electric uh, electrolytic solution one of them is releasing the electron one of them is gaining the electron so due to this electron exchange a small potential develops on uh, on these electrodes and this potential is called electrode potential okay and if we are observing this electrode potential at stp at stp what stp is stp can be defined as standard standard temperature and pressure it means temperature must be 0 kelvin and pressure must be 1 atm so if we are observing or calculating or determining the electrode potential at this condition then 
it should be called standard electrode potential the definition is written here electrode potential of concentration of each species in unity is unity and carried out at 298 kelvin okay so 298 kelvin so this is not 0 kelvin this is u degree centigrade sorry many students were uh, uh, asked me sir what is the difference between stp what is the uh, difference between the temperature of stp and ntp no, normal temperature pressure so if you are taking u degree centigrade the temperature should be 273 kelvin but if you are taking 25 degree centigrade which is called room temperature it should be 298 kelvin okay so in many books both the conditions both the temperatures are called state stp temperature okay so don't worry about it don't uh, take uh, too may too much tension now negative e naught and positive e naught e naught stands for again electrode potential of uh, any respective cell so negative e naught means a stronger reducing agent than h plus h2 couple and positive e naught means weaker reducing agent than h plus h2 couple okay so if you are uh, observing the positive uh, uh, e naught it means that species is weak reducing agent but if you are uh, observing the negative e naught of any species then that should a species should be stronger reducing agent okay yeah so we have completed generally all the things mm-hmm uh, only applications are left okay. okay the last but not the least study of electrode processes and cells let me show you one uh, simple uh, cell here suppose we have one beaker like this one beaker like this both the beakers are connected with a salt bridge we have one electrode we have second electrode and both the electrodes are dipped in the electrolytic solution these electrodes are connected with connected with galvanometer and one or key this is key yeah now let me tell you one thing suppose this electrode is zinc this electrode is copper zinc is dipped in ZnSO4 solution and copper is dipped in CSO4 solution to maintain the electrical neutrality, we have salt bridge, salt bridge, we have galvanometer, and we have a key. Why I am making this diagram? To study the application. Redox reaction is generally used to study electrode processes and electrochemical cells this is a diagram of electrochemical cell electrochemical cell okay now what is electrochemical cell in electrochemical cell chemical reactions were takes place and due to these chemical reactions electrons are produced and these electrons, these produced electrons can be used for generation of electricity or current or charge or current sorry not charge current. So if you are performing a chemical reaction, suppose you are performing a chemical reaction and by those chemical reaction you are exchanging some electrons, gaining of electron, releasing of electron something like this. So due to some chemical reaction, if you are generating current, then this kind of process or this kind of instrument is called electrochemical cell. 
okay which we can understand with the help of following diagram which i have made here okay now zinc is dipped in zno4 copper is dipped in co uh, co4 zinc is acting like an anode but copper electrode is acting like a cathode and why is it so because if we observe the chemical processes uh, happening in the electrochemical cell zinc is releasing two electrons and converting itself into zn2 plus and these electrons are captured by cu2 plus ions which is, which are present in the solution and converts itself into cu solid so zinc is liberating two electrons then we can say it should be your oxidation process obviously we have read that and if copper 2 plus ions are gaining two electrons it should be called reduction process if i add both the reactions both the electrons will cancel out and the final equation or reaction uh, we can obtain from this that is zn solid cu2 plus in aqueous form because ions are not solid right zn2 plus again aqueous form plus copper solid by the help of this chem electrochemical reaction we can obtain the electrode potential this is called e not cell will be equal to electron e ele not cell will be equal to 1.1 volt this is the potential generated by this electrochemical cell due to the exchange of electrons and man, today many industries many automobile industries electronic industries is using this technique for generating current okay so this is a simple method uh, to understand the redox reaction in uh, reactions applications with the help of electrochemical cells right uh, one more thing many students have asked from me uh, sir how can we determine potential of cell if potential of electrode sorry potential of cathode and potential of anode is given so let me tell you so if we have to find out the e cell e cell means electrode potential of cell the whole cell total cell then we can write a formula that is e cathode obviously e not cathode this is e not e not cathode minus e not anode if you have the values of electrode potential of cathode and anode individually you can minus them you can subtract them and you will be Get, you will be get the total electrode potential of the whole cell okay this, this is the first formula but if we have the second formula like this we have the second formula as well e naught cell will be equal to e naught right minus e naught left you know that if we observe the electrochemical cell the cathode is present the present on the right side but anode is present on the left side that's why the new formula has been created by scientists that is e not right minus e not left or the third formula which is very short uh, in terms of these formulas that is e not cell will be equal to e not c minus e not Okay, so C stands for cathode and A stands for anode. Okay, so these three formulas or we can say one formula can be used for calculating the total electrochemical cell of any reaction if values are given. Okay, now in, the, the, in this electrochemical cell we have used one term that is salt bridge. Now, now what is salt bridge? Let me tell you because uh, you have to understand this topic completely 
सॉल्ट ब्रिज इज लाइक एक्चुअली इट इज अव शेप ट्यूब यू शेप समथिंग लाइक दिस इट इज अव शेप ट्यूब एंड दिस यू शेप ट्यूब इज मेड बाय इट इज मेड बाय ग्लास ऑब्वियसली बट वट काइंड ऑफ सब्सटेंसेज आर फिल्ड इन दिस यू शेप ट्यूब दिस इज अ हॉलो ट्यूब हॉलो ट्यूब हॉलो यू शेप ट्यूब एंड दिस ट्यूब इज फिल्ड विद अगार 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 जेल एंड सम सॉल्ट and which kind of salts we have to use to, for making uh, the salt bridge tell me all kind of those salts which are electrolytic in nature or who can produce positive and negative ions in the aqueous solution we have to use those kind of salts let me tell you number 1 kcl potassium chloride नंबर टू के टू एस ओ फोर नंबर थ्री एन एच फोर सी एल के टू एस ओ फोर स्टैंड फॉर पोटेशियम सल्फेट एन एच फोर सी एल स्टैंड फॉर अमोनियम क्लोराइड देन वी कैन यूज एन एच फोर होल ट्वाइस एस ओ फोर अमोनियम सल्फेट सिमिलरली एन एन ओ थ्री सोडियम नाइट्रेट एन ए टू एस ओ फोर सोडियम सल्फेट एसेट्रा ओके सो दीज टू कॉम्पोनेंट्स आर एसेंशियल फॉर मेकिंग सॉल्ट ब्रिज द फिलिंग ऑफ सॉल्ट ब्रिज ऑब्वियसली सॉल्ट विच आर एक्टिक इन नेचर एंड कैन प्रोड्यूस पॉजिटिव एंड नेगेटिव आयस इन सोल्यूशन कैन बी यूज फॉर सॉल्ट सॉल्ट इन सॉल्ट ब्रिज बट वट इज अगार अगार जेल अगार अगार जेल इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड agarose gel agarose gel and how can we obtain agarose gel agarose gel can be obtained from algae do you know anything about algae definitely okay the green color substances uh, on uh, river banks uh, appears during the rainy season the green substances right so green uh, plants we can say so green plants are called algae when we grind this algae uh, with the help of water we can obtain the agarose gel so whenever we obtain the agarose gel we have to mix this agarose gel with uh, these kind of salts and we have to prepare a mixture after that we have to fill that hollow tube with this agarose gel having some salts and we can create a salt bridge now what is the uh, function of salt bridge what is the function of salt bridge salt bridge can uh, uh used for two functions number 1 to maintain maintain electrical neutrality to maintain electrical neutrality suppose that zinc is releasing two electron and converting itself to positive zn2 plus and zinc is continuously doing that so if zinc is continuously doing that the amount of positive charge is increasing on the left side to neutralize that positive charge salt bridge will release negative ions in the form of cl minus so4 2 minus cl minus so4 2 minus no3 minus etc and these negative charge will neutralize the zn2 plus positive charges on the left hand side and the solution aqua solution will be completely electrically neutral okay and second thing second function is for balancing balancing conductivity for balancing conductivity both the beakers are separated from each other you uh, you know that we have uh, made the diagram yeah if we remove this salt bridge both the beakers will be separated from each other current or charge will not flow from one point to another point right to make the circuit complete we have to add salt bridge by attaching both the beakers 
okay so this is all about the chapter redox reactions and we have uh, uh, we have uh, yes we have taken all the topics from this chapter from this uh, flow chart and i hope it will be benefit for you please do practice the pre uh, previous year questions of this chapter because they are very essential very important and if you practice those questions you can easily enhance your confidence in this chapter okay so thank you so much everybody i hope i am uh, doing my uh, teaching very well i can uh, understand the topic in very easily this is my try from my side and i hope uh, 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 it is benefiting uh, uh, for you for your upcoming examinations thank, thank you so much have a good day bye bye